More Americans died during the Civil War than in both World Wars and Vietnam combined. And no single battle exacted a greater human toll than Gettysburg. Many of the soldiers who drew their last agonizing breaths on that field were buried where they fell. Today, the battlefield at Gettysburg is an historic monument, but it is also America's largest unmarked graveyard. And not surprisingly, many ghosts are said to haunt its hallowed ground. There's a special feeling here at Gettysburg. When you come here, it's almost like going into an eye of a hurricane. A lot of the people that were killed here were killed uh, very violently, very suddenly, and many of them literally bled to death on the battlefields. Their lives were cut short, uh, suddenly and horribly. And perhaps that's why a great deal of psychic energy remains in places like Gettysburg. It's the little Pennsylvania town that changed the course of American history. Nearly 200,000 fought here in July 1863, and by the end of the three-day battle, more than 50,000 soldiers were lost. It was the turning point of the Civil War and is still, according to some, a pivotal location for paranormal investigators. In his book, author and Civil War enthusiast Mark Nesbitt has collected reports of paranormal activity by modern-day visitors to the battlefield. The Phantom Regiment is one that's been seen several times by several different people, sometimes in groups. They see a regiment uh, lined up out in the uh, middle of a field. They are uh, maneuvering, they wander around, they begin to march, they march off into the woods and then vanish. Um, this has been seen a number of times. Beyond the ghost stories, there are strange photographs that seem to have captured tangible evidence of a paranormal energy here. I actually didn't believe in ghosts until I started taking pictures and one showed up in my picture. It's the first time I actually believed there is something out there. I looked at it and I was shocked and I said, Tim, I think we captured a ghost. I think a lot of people just don't want to admit they believe in ghosts because it doesn't sound like something respectable. Charles Emmons has been a professor of sociology at Gettysburg College since 1974. He believes that the psychic trauma of 1863 may endure today in the form of residual haunting and is not just limited to the battlefield. This is Pennsylvania Hall. During the battle, it was used by both sides as a hospital. Four or five different people independently reported seeing a soldier walking around on the top of that cupola on Pennsylvania Hall. And I interviewed a student who had walked by there about 11 o'clock at night. He was very upset about the experience. He was not trying to hoax. He didn't want it to happen. He was obviously upset. And inside, strange haunting images pervade. Two administrators went down the elevator, punched the button for the first floor. It didn't work properly. They went to the basement instead. And when the, the doors, doors opened, opened to reveal not a scene that was cleaned up for storage, but a scene out of time and reason, a hospital scene from the time of the battle. They punched frantically at the buttons to get them out of this uh, hell that they had descended into. And uh, one Kept of the- Kept punching the buttons and eventually got up out of there. But most of Gettysburg's ghostly encounters occur here, on the battlefield where 51,000 men died. Gettysburg probably, as far as I'm concerned, is probably the most haunted battlefield that I've come across so far. Paranormal investigator Dale Kazmarek was asked to accompany a sightings team to the battlefield for a nighttime surveillance. This area is, seems to be one of the several different locations that's very active as far as uh, paranormal activity. Uh, a lot of loss of life would have occurred right here. Among the tools of his trade are a Geiger counter, magnetometer, and other highly sensitive electronic devices that will register anomalous energy in the area. Our sightings camera was equipped with a special night vision lens to record in low light conditions. Most likely what I'm picking up are, are small pockets of anomalies. Uh, little slight deviations in magnetic field that might indicate a presence of some kind. Kazmarek spent several hours taking readings in an area known as the Triangular Field. This is the site where Confederate soldiers began the charge on Little Round Top. Some of the bloodiest battles took place along this ridge. Right there, I got a real high reading, real high static, static discharge reading right here. Uh, really no reason for it. There's no, there's no way static should be built up out here. Nothing to attract static electricity or negative ions. 
another reading right by the uh, the rock over here, which was approximately uh, 20 on the on the scale. Meter peaks and anomalous readings continued until dawn. I think it's very interesting out there, especially at the triangular field. We got a lot of interesting readings out there, including uh, a lot of disturbances with the negative ion detector. Residual haunting also seemed to be present in the end where the sightings team stayed. The Farnsworth house, built in 1816, had been an ad hoc infantry position during the war. These particular men were sharpshooters. They, they were uh, most likely infantry soldiers. They were Confederate. They came to the house, maybe the door was unlocked. They climbed the stairs, the vantage point, and the most protection would serve would be the garret, which is the attic. They flew open the door. They laid down on their bellies. They had a great position. They were actually firing and killing the Union soldiers in the Jenny Wade. The name of the neighboring inn. When the soldiers were captured, one of them was playing a mouth harp, a popular instrument of the time. Guests claim they hear his music still, and Patty claims she's seen the ghost of one of the men. I got a very fleeting glimpse of him. Uh, he's a very tall, willowy young man, about maybe 17. If you looked at him and didn't know your age, you would think he was like 13, 14 years old. Despite credible eyewitnesses and new electronic data gathering methods, Professor Emmons believes we may never be able to scientifically prove the existence of the ghosts of Gettysburg. There are other ways of knowing ghosts. If you have the experience, a kind of religious, supernatural experience, it does something to you. There's just some sense of awe that tells you that something is happening here. And I don't know how exactly you study that scientifically. We may have to go beyond science to understand this phenomenon. For now, the spirits of the men who fought here can best be captured when you stand on the battlefield and feel the sense of history. I think since there was a lot of violence, especially the ones that were just literally uh, ripped to pieces, I think they'll be remained for a very, very long time. Most Civil War battlefields do not survive as historic sites. They've been plowed up, paved over, and built upon. But beneath the concrete and steel of our modern age, the echoes of the past remain. Many people believe that if you listen closely, you can hear them still. <laughs>